Hi, and welcome to episode eight of the Facts and Blog and Podcast. Today, uh, I have my good friend, Pat Murphy here. He's our director of sales. We're going to get into a little bit about what Pat does at Faxon. And also, we're going to talk about our new pinned gas block barrels. Uh, but obviously, we are still in lo-fi style, low production uh, due to the quarantine and many of us having to work from home. So uh, I threw the our skyline video behind me and Pat has a sweet uh, skyline picture behind him. So at least we have a theme. So Pat, thanks for joining us this week. I really appreciate it. I know it's really busy and odd with the quarantine and all, but it's good to have you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, just, you know, maybe tell the folks a little bit about your history at Faxon or even in firearms in general, because I know you didn't start out as our director of sales. Um, so if you want to give a little insight into that and how you came to be where you are, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess uh, kind of my first step into the gun world was in college. Um, started working in a gun shop here in Cincinnati. Um, was just, you know, a counter employee, worked, worked my way up to assistant manager, or one of the assistant floor leads. Um, so, and that, that shop actually became a chain of stores. It's now one of the, uh, I think the largest retail chain of gun shops and ranges in the country. Um, and I was at the original location that was in Cincinnati. Um, so worked there for about two and a half years or so throughout college. Um, Finished up college, kept working there for a little bit, trying to figure out where I wanted to go. And I always was interested in the gun industry. Never had a, there was never really a direct path to get beyond, you know, gun shop employees. So uh, I had a buddy that actually came to work for Faxon and he was taking a contracting gig in Afghanistan for a year. And he said, Hey, uh, Faxon needs a sales guy um, because I'm leaving for a year. And I said, cool. So I applied. Came and interviewed, got the job. So worked as the uh, dealer sales manager, account manager type role for a few years. And uh, last January was uh, took over as director of sales for the company. So um, been doing that for a little over a year. I've been at Faction for probably about four and a half years total. Um, done pretty much every role in sales, customer service. Um, um, you know, toy around in the marketing side a little bit, work with our marketing guys, obviously, um, but largely do sales, both dealer, um, help um, organize some of the direct to consumer promotions and stuff that we do, and then also OEM sales. So we're a big machine shop and we do a lot of OEM manufacturing for other companies in the industry. So, um, you know, I do it, that, that kind of all falls under the director role um, yeah. within Faxon. Well, and one thing that was interesting to me, you know, because I've, I've only been with the, the company since November, is just kind of going through the backlog and history and kind of seeing how much it's grown year over year over year. And I imagine, I mean, you seeing it for four years and these last probably two or three have been some of the biggest in growth as far as not just, you know, size and revenue, but even product offerings and, and things of that variety. Yeah, absolutely. When I started, we were we were doing barrels. Um, we had we had started the barrel manufacturing, but we hadn't offered any bolt carrier groups, hand guards, any of that stuff. Um, those all became kind of newer products as I was starting. So you know, it's, it's been incredible to see the growth within the company. We we've been you know positive growth every year. Um, even when the industry overall is down, we're we're still growing. Uh, we're on track for huge growth this year. We're going to be, you know, moving into a new building and we're already having to add on to it before we even move in. Um, so, you know, it's, it's been awesome to see how much growth and expansion we've seen as a brand going from four years ago. We had what is now a lot of the key leaders within the company were all in a small office area, all within arm's reach of each other. You know, we had, you know, five director slash executive level people all within mm -hmm. arm's reach of each other in the same room where all the guns were being built. Um, yeah. 
you know, so we were running everything out of what was basically a storage room. Um, and now to see where we are, um, you know, a pretty short amount of time later, it's been incredible to see and been incredible to be a part of. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, you mentioned barrels. And, and one of the things that Jay and I talked about on the show a few weeks ago was our integral uh, device barrels, uh, which have been uh, really exciting to a lot of people. Um, you know, when we first launched them, I think we, we sold out of two SKUs of them in a weekend. And, uh, uh, you know, people in the lightweight crowd have been loving them. People who need to make sure they're extra careful about that 16-inch barrel length minimum have really loved them. But the other thing that we teased at SHOT Show uh, are the, what I have you talking about today, are pin gas block barrels. So for those who don't know kind of why someone would pin a gas block to their barrel, before we get into our product, would you just talk a little bit about why someone would want to pin a gas block rather than just using the set screws or another method? Um, I, I think the, the leading reason is uh, durability and peace of mind. Um, there's, you know, there's a few different methods for attaching gas blocks. There's clamp on style, there's set screws, there's two, even two piece ones out there. Um, and what you see most commonly is set screws. Um, but there, there are a lot of people who, especially if your barrel isn't dimpled, they're, they're, they don't fully trust the set screws. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the pin, the cross pin adds an extra level of security. You know, if you're, you're shooting high round count or, um, you know, a, a high schedule of fire, there's a possibility that, you know, maybe you forgot to put Loctite on your, on your set screws on your gas block. and you have set screws start work, walking their way out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, screws can do that. Absolutely. So, you know, the possibility of a screw backing out and all of a sudden your gas block uh, shifts and, and isn't over the gas port properly. And all of a sudden your gun's dead, you know, your right. gun stops working. So um, it's definitely, it's really number one primary purpose is, you know, that added level of security um, of having both the set screws and a cross pin so that, your, your gas block cannot shift. And so what's the traditional way of going about that? So say somebody wanted to pin their gas block. Um, obviously barrels don't necessarily, you know, until we talk about ours, you know, if somebody just buys kind of a stock barrel and a stock gas block, I mean, they, they unless they have the tools for it at home to be able to do the cross pin groove, uh, the notching, I mean, they got to send it out to a local shop or a gunsmith or something of that variety. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. That that's previously been the way you could do it. Um, there's been barrel companies that have offered it as kind of a service. Um, for us, it really wasn't a great fit to do a kind of after the fact service um, because it really disrupts the flow of parts and adds a lot of time and, and, and time equals cost. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, for us being in a production environment and trying to keep parts moving smoothly, it didn't make a lot of sense to do as a service. So, you know, if someone really wanted one of our barrels, they'd have to buy it, buy a gas block and send it to a gunsmith. And, and the, the tricky part of gunsmith is there's a lot of really talented, really skilled, um, well-respected gunsmiths. And then there's also guys who just, are a gunsmith because they had some business cards made yeah. <laughs> um, and they may not know what they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. You're talking about drilling into the surface of a barrel. You have to be very careful not to go too deep, especially when you're looking at lightweight barrels, you can make that sidewall very thin. You could screw up harmonics. So now, you know, your groups are all over the place. Um, so there's, there's a lot of factors and it was not, always something someone could acquire easily, um, you know, especially if they didn't have somebody that they knew and trusted to basically drill into their barrel. Yeah. And, you know, when I was getting ready for like getting the product pages and everything together for our barrels, which I'll pull out here in just a moment, I looked at some forums, just some different shooting forums to just kind of to see what other people are talking about when they're asking questions about uh, pinning gas blocks. And a lot of people were talking about, you know, uh, just the additional cost. They, everybody was like, okay, well, well, how much does it cost? Like how much does a gunsmith 
you know, charge to do a service like that and all that sort of stuff. And I mean, it ranged everywhere from like 25 to like 125. I mean, it was kind of all over the place on how much it would cost because like you said, you have a, a kind of a grab bag of experience levels and professionalism levels. And, you know, is this a legitimate shop or some dude in his basement who's like, yeah, I got a vice and a drill. I think I could, I think I could handle that. But this is uh, one of ours and I'll throw up some uh, prettier images since this will be a little hard to see on the webcam. Um, but this is one of our pinned gas block barrels. Now this is one of our gunner profiles. So if you are uh, familiar with our proprietary gunner profile that kind of mixes the best of both worlds from the pencil and the SOCOM. But this is basically how it ships. It ships with the barrel, the gas block uh, with the set screws hand tightened on, um, as well as the cross pin. But what you'll notice, and we'll show you uh, a larger image of this, is the fact that the notch is already there. So you can see that, um, you know, it's done well, it's not chewed up, it's not biting into your finish. Obviously, we know that it isn't too far, uh, you know, into the sidewall that it would cause any sort of uh, malfunction or issue. Um, but, you know, Pat, how does this, how do we do this in, as far as like machining is concerned? Like, where does this happen in our process? Uh, kind of how, how do we get there? So that happens right after the gas port is drilled and the barrel, um, the receiver extension pin is drilled and pressed in. So the gas port and extension pin, which is the little silver or black pin that slides into that notch of your upper receiver, um, those two things are done at the same time because they need to be perfectly in line with each other um, so that you're not having where your barrel is your gas port slightly off center and now your gas block has to sit off center and it, it causes all kinds of issues. So those two operations are done at the same time. And then right after that, we notch the barrels in, in production in one of our mills. Um, we've got dedicated fixtures built for it. So that indexes off of that pin location and the gas port location so that you know that notch is in the proper location to line up with the pre-drilled holes that are in the gas block. Yeah. So this is like coming at it as it's coming together, you know, and then it hits our QC again before it's done anyway, you yeah. know, so it's, it's not like, uh, you know, taking, and I, and don't get me wrong. I don't want to poo poo talented gunsmiths who do this all the time and there's no problem, but for people who are just getting into it or who might be a little nervous about it, I mean, this, this thing is going to go through our normal QC even after that notch is done. Uh, you know, when it's done in one of our mills, like you said, with dedicated fixtures, it's not being thrown in a vice and drilled with a hand drill or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. And if, and if you, um, if someone decides to do it at home and feels like they have the, the right tools to do it, if that notch is not drilled in the correct location, your gas block's not going to sit centered. It's going to be off slightly and that can cause functioning issues. And if it, if it's off at such an angle that when you have the gas block pinned that the gun won't cycle because the gas port's not aligning with the um, gas port in the gas block, um, if, if that's not working, then basically scrap that barrel or you have to accept that you're not going to be able to use a pinned gas block. Yeah. So, you know, if you get to that point and, and someone's trying to do it on their own and, and they're really dead set on, I want this gas block pinned to this barrel, if it's not done properly, that that barrel's trashed. Um, yeah. You know, like you said, it still go. All of these go through our normal QC processes. So, in the unlikely occasion where we mess something up, that's still covered by our guarantee. You know, we're gonna hundred absolutely replace it. Um, no matter no matter what. So you have that assurance where you don't have that if you're having someone else do it or you're trying to do it yourself. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd imagine not even just for us, but for a lot of bar barrel manufacturers. I mean, the minute you decide you are going to physically alter the state of the mm -hmm. barrel, I mean, you're in warranty and guarantee gray zone in general. Mm -hmm. uh, so like I mentioned, the one I was showing is uh, one of our gunner barrels. Uh, how did we decide which barrel profiles and calibers we were going to do first with uh, with this series? 
so we're starting with seven different SKUs, um, which those seven are our best selling barrels. Um, so it's what we see consumers purchasing the most for their various builds. Um, and we wanted to start with that initial offering to, to be able to support the new builders or guys who are going to build something else and want to use that same barrel or, you know, have recommended that barrel to a buddy because they have one and they love it. Um, so we wanted to start with stuff, you know, SKUs that we see moving well. And then from there, we, we like to listen to our customer base. And, you know, so if you, if you really want to see this offered in another, another configuration or on a different barrel, you know, send us an email, let us know. And we'll be, I'm certain we'll be expanding the offerings as we move forward. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's the same deal, you know, just like we talked about with the integral barrels, you know, some folks are like, Hey, are you going to do this in seven, six, two, are you going to do this in 300 blackout? You know, cause right now we're doing them in five, five, six and nine millimeter for PCC. And, uh, it, same thing. It's just like, okay, let's see how this goes. These are our most popular, you know, for these types mm -hmm. of lengths and configurations. And, uh, you know, that that's one thing that I've been impressed with, with, with Faxon and coming on has been, it's really uh, taking the temperature of the market all the time. And that's the reason why we even have these pin gas block barrels. It's the reason we even have the integral barrels. It's to say like, hey, we noticed there's, there's a need in the market. Uh, mm -hmm. and there's a desire in the market to, to, to be filled. And, you know, that's how we come up with uh, some of these new ideas. Now, we are uh, finishing up production on these pin gas block barrels this week as we're recording this. So hopefully by the time this airs, we're, we're giving you some notes down in the lower parts of the screen about where you can find them. Um, but, uh, you know, the other thing is that as far as what I've seen, they're definitely not cost prohibitive. I mean, considering, you know, you're going to be looking at... Uh, you know, if in general, if you were to go buy the barrel, uh, buy a gas block, go buy uh, the servicing to get it drilled at a good place, like I, I think you'll find that it is it's pretty cost uh, cost competitive. Yeah, they are priced right in the same ballpark as if you had just bought the barrel and then bought one of our low profile gas blocks. Um, and that that is another note. So these will all ship with our low profile gas blocks. Um, the only variation is that the, the gas blocks that come with these barrels have two set screws instead of three. Um, our standard versions come with three set screws, but you lose one of those spots for the, for the pinhole, which, um, you know, I, I, I don't think consumers are going to have much of a problem with that considering most low profile gas blocks don't even come with three set screws. So yeah. we're actually still meeting kind of the, the industry standard with the addition of the, the cross pin. Yeah, for sure. Well, Pat, thanks so much for joining us this week. Uh, we're going to put some links uh, on this video as to where you can find uh, these pin gas block barrels and some other information about the things that we've been talking about this week. And before we get going today, I do want to remind you about our Guardian Purchase Program. And uh, Pat, I know this is something that, that you champion very strongly as well. Um, we've had such a great response to it. And what's funny is we've, we've been doing it for a while, but I feel like every time I mention it on a podcast or, or do something like that, uh, another like uh, industry news outlet picks it up and says we just announced it. So yeah. uh, I, I don't I don't want this to seem like it, we're pretending it's new news, but we are going to show the tutorial video after this video this week on on the podcast. But uh, since I have Pat with me, Pat, do you want to just describe real quick some of the benefits and perks of uh, the the Guardian Purchase Program? Yeah, so the Guardian Purchase Program. Um, we've always offered a military law enforcement first responder discount. Um, basically, what this is 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 putting a, a little bit more structure to it, putting a name to it, um, you know, so people feel like they, you know, they're getting something that they've earned, and they're actually part of a specific program within facts, and it's not just, you know, hey, here's your discount, move on. Um, yeah. So, so parks wise, you're going to get discounts on any. Facts and products sold through our website. Um, there's varying levels of discount depending on if you're talking about barrels versus complete firearms or shirts or, you know, basically any facts and product on our site. So it's really simple. All you do is send, send credentials to customer service at factsandfirearms.com. We get you switched over and you're done. 
So then when you when you log in, everything shows up at your discounted price. Um, just easy, simple. Um, you know, you would browse the site like you would any other website. It's just things show up a little bit cheaper for you. Yeah, that's the thing that I think sets apart our program in a way. I mean, one, you're getting great pricing all year long. Uh, but secondly, you don't have to like put it in your cart and then submit the cart and then mm -hmm. get a discount approval or get a rebate or whatever. It's all automatically popping up, uh, you know, as you're shopping and it'll show you the regular sale price plus your price and everything. It's a, it's a pretty cool deal. So again, we'll have a link to that. Uh, we'll have the tutorial in on the end of this video as well. Uh, but Pat, thank you for joining us this week. Happy to, happy to be here. All right. And we'll talk to you all soon. We want to extend our deepest gratitude to military, police, first responders, and more by saying thank you with special pricing and discounts on all facts and products. Here's how you get started. First, you'll head on over to our website, factsandfirearms.com. From there, you'll want to click Support and Guardian Purchase Program in the drop-down. Then you'll see the instructions on how to get started, so let's just walk through those. First, you'll want to register for an account on our website. If you've already bought something from us on our website before, then this part's already taken care of. Second, you'll want to send a copy of your credentials or some reasonable verification of affiliation to customer service at factionfirearms.com. We get a lot of emails where people are like, hey, will this count? Will this ID count? Will this VA card count? Chances are, yes, a lot of them will count, but make sure you attach an image or a copy of that verification to the email before you even ask customer service. That way they can expedite the process for you. As soon as the account has been created or updated, we will send you an email letting you know that you're ready to go. The discount will be available anytime online when you go to your shopping cart. If you have any more questions, please email customer service at factsandfirearms.com.